All right, welcome back to another video. I hope everybody's doing well and had a happy July 4th weekend. Unless uh, you're probably from England, then you probably don't celebrate it. Although maybe you do. Got rid of 300 million uh, people that would have been a drag. But anyway, it's uh, very, very, very hot here again. I think it was 96 today. And uh, what we're looking at is just going to be an update video on a few different things. I kind of gave up on my half black pastel line. I had a different type which had like a smoky color in the tail which would grow out to be the edge of the tail. So I bought these uh, from a really good breeder named Bruce down in Tennessee. The uh, seller name is Bayway. And these are very, very nice uh, half black pastels. Uh, so I have uh, one female shy of two trios. And the females are very healthy. I should see some fry in there within uh, probably about a week or two. I think I've had these fish about 10 days maybe, two weeks. So this is one of the tanks that has uh, hard water stains on the front. So I didn't get to uh, try to clean that with that barkeeper's friend before uh, I had to move these fish into it. So, so I had to acclimate them very quick because the post office did a pretty lousy job. I think they were shipped on Monday from Tennessee. This was not the holiday week, it was the week before. And they got here on Friday. So not the greatest uh, time to only go a thousand miles. If that, 1200 miles, I don't, know how far Tennessee is I forget never been there it's a nice place so anyway so that's the uh, half black pastels and uh, I gave up on the other line because uh, the next couple of batches that I got uh, were just they had too much of a smoky color in the tail and it wasn't uh, growing out to the edge it just was all throughout the tail so I figured I really can't do anything with them so I moved on to the, to getting some new ones. So these are the uh, females from the, uh, the ATFG, really intense red albinos. A uh, couple of the females have a long fins and uh, the one that's chasing the other females is actually one of the original ones. She's about a year and a half old now. Uh, she's probably going to come out of the tank and go into a tank of her own because she chases the other females too much and I got to put a couple of males in there and I don't want to lose them because she's a little too aggressive. So what else can I show you? The, uh, these, if we can get them to show up, are glass belly pingus. Uh, I got the adults from my friend Tony Anderson out of uh, Ohio. And these are starting to develop pretty good. I'm trying to get a close-up so you can see uh, they ate sausage and eggs for breakfast. Eh, it's not too easy. Eh, they're a little tough to get on here, but I just moved them into a five and a half. I had uh, raised them in a two and a half for about uh, eight weeks. So I forget how many's in here, probably somewhere around 10. So definitely nice. I like these and uh, I have some more fry in the tank with the adults. So I have to move them, the fry out somewhere. A little, a little tough to get the, I uh, can't really see it. So that's kind of a waste of time. And these are the uh, the fry I got from the mystery female uh, about uh, two months ago, I guess. Uh, I was contacted by somebody that uh, a train shipper, a friend of mine actually, and that uh, a person that bought uh, full black Moscow's and some kind of a red guppy uh, didn't want them after they came in, so. I bought the two pair, pair of each, and the female 
lived and had fry. Thank God she was pre-hit. The male had died in transit before it ever left the transshipper's place. So it's kind of like a mystery. I'm interested to see what these end up being. Uh, there's not too much red going on there in the tail. They're too young to really sex uh, out yet. But then I'm assuming they're going to be some kind of a red bicolor. So anyway, so they're in a five and a half gallon tank. I forget how many's in here, uh, but they're obviously just starting to color up now. And uh, there we go. So there we go. And I can kind of see. All right, I will uh, update some other stuff and be right back. Hey, I'll put this in the middle of a video. I was able to get uh, some wild colored uh, axolotls. They're very small. They're probably only about three months old, I'm guessing. They're about two and a half inches long. And I bought three of them. This guy is just staring at me. Uh, it looks like they just grew their uh, four arms and legs recently. They have their gills going. And this guy might uh, do something. He moves around as much as a Subaru. Just uh, nothing. All right. Now there's two more in the tank. Uh, they're not in really good spots to actually see them. So I'll figure that out. There's one back there. You can see the top of his gills. Yeah, I fed them some uh, pellets, food pellets, and uh, they've been eating them, which is good. So they're they're really interesting because they come off the ground or come off the bottom of the tank as they eat. Yeah, I don't know where the third one's hiding. He's somewhere. So anyway, for now, I put them all three in a 10-gallon tank, and uh, once they get a couple inches longer in probably about two, three months, I'll move them into a 15 gallon long or a 20 long. And I'll just have to keep my eye on the fact that all three of them grow at the same rate because I don't want any to uh, chew up their uh, brothers and sisters. So, all right, they're uh, the other one. I don't know where the heck he is, might be I think that's the top part of his gill back there. Pretty sure. Yeah, that's the other one back there. It's kind of moving around like a little dinosaur. So I put hiding places in for all three of them. Got a uh, flower pot with the back uh, hollowed out. And this really weird looking pink thing. There he is. So I haven't named them yet. I'll have to come up with some names. And that one kind of looks like a friend of mine named Bob Kaler. So I might name him Bob Kaler. No, that's not nice. So you can see that their uh, arms and legs just grew in because the little claw, toes, whatever, aren't uh, really that long yet. So that's pretty good view of them. Uh, the fish store had about 12 of them, maybe more. This one looks like he got the edge of his tail chopped, so I guess that'll grow back. And this one still has yet to move. Living up to the name of Subaru. Maybe I'll call him Subaru. I like it. And there's the third one. All right, I'll just throw this in the middle of a video. Oh my God, he moved. Look at that. It's amazing. That's, uh, looks like he's got an extra gill there. I'm not sure. Anyway, so they're zipping around. Well, zipping for them. And, uh, all right, I'll just add this in the middle of a video and go from there. All right, I'll wrap up the video with, uh, just a look at some of the Roebuck Reds I set up as, uh, breeders. And, uh, these are young fish. I uh, put some thin leaf water sprite in there. I think I put in three males and five females. 
looks like it. I don't see any more in the back, so I guess that's what I did. So uh, the color on these things are fantastic. I just have to watch uh, uh, the dorsal on the males and make sure the tail is uh, correct and not a veil tail or a flag tail or anything like that. Now, like I said, these are young, so they're going to grow quite a bit over the next uh, probably six months. And these are in a 10 gallon tank. I have some others. I have to clean some of these tanks up. These are, it's just a tank of fry in here somewhere. All right, they're invisible fry. And this tank is uh, a batch growing out that I set up. Uh, they're about 11 weeks old. I forgot where I put the paper. So what I'm gonna do is uh, the males are going to come out and go into their own tank uh, which is going to be this tank once I clean it up and set it back up and then the females will stay in this tank and then what I'll do is I'll select some more breeders for the uh, for the next tank because I'd like to have uh, three tanks of breeders of these things because uh, they're one of my favorite fish so I think uh, I should have that done by tomorrow if all goes well. So what do you call an exploding monkey? A baboon! A baboon! Oh my god, that's so bad, it's good! Oh, oh that's awful. And it's a tank with fry and a uh, female that just had fry at the bottom. It looks terrible, so I'm going to get her out. And this uh, is a tank I have to go through and pull out some breeders and then pull out some uh, trios that'll be for sale so all right uh i think uh that kind of wraps up the video i uh, appreciate you watching if you have any questions you can email me i put the email address in my uh video descriptions and if you want to buy the food you can uh, send me an email as well and i appreciate you watching thank you very much